you know, when it, when, when it finds its way into a Florida realtor's economic analysis, you know it's true that pickleball is everywhere. <laughs> and maybe the next summit they can find, uh, they can find him a, a, a hotel room right next to the pickleball court. That'd... Our next speaker is someone very familiar to many of us. He's the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors and its senior vice president of research. He is responsible for existing home sales statistics, affordability index, and home buyers and sellers profile reports. Ladies and gentlemen, from Arlington, Virginia, Dr. Lawrence Young. Uh, very great to be here. Uh, Arlington is my home residence, uh, which is just directly across from Washington, D.C., where the office of NAR is. Uh, right now, we are talking with the members of Congress to assure that the flood insurance uh, would be readily available. Uh, even through the shutdown, it looks like this coin toss, 50-50 chance whether we are going to have a shutdown or not. Uh, if you are on some rural area, maybe a couple of counties away, but Collier County being as, essentially at the end, I'm not sure what other county you can go, uh, but the USDA loans uh, for the rural area, that may not be available during the uh, shutdown. Uh, you know, some people who may need those loans. FHA, VA loans should be available other than perhaps some delay because there will be some staffing shortage uh, in Washington. But great to be here uh, in Naples. Last time I was here, I don't remember, was it 2018 or 2019 pre-COVID condition? Uh, I'm glad that President uh, Nick uh, Bozian uh, you know, reminded me that when I uh, came one time, I said that uh, you are in a great county, Collier County, because when I look at the statistics, this is pre-COVID, uh, I look at where the wealthy people are moving into. There are three counties in America. Carlyo County being one, so uh, President Nick during that time, I don't know how he remembers that, but he said, this is what I said. Uh, so Carlyo County was one. Loudoun County in Virginia is another, little suburb, sort of secondary county out in the D.C. area. Uh, and the third county is Douglas County out in Colorado, suburb of Denver, Colorado. So this three county attracts the wealthy movers uh, in America, and consequently, uh, Brad O'Connor just mentioned, prices up 88% from COVID, pre-COVID to today here. You are looking at, at a minimum, $250,000 in wealth gain for property owners. So if you are renters, you missed out. But if you were property owners from 2019 onwards, you are looking at $200,000, $300,000 in housing wealth gain. Of course, it's not sitting on your bank account, so you don't feel it, but if you were to sell a home, uh, this is what the condition would be. But this year has been a, quite a challenge, or in fact, you can even say last year was beginning to feel challenged with this year worsening. And of course, you know that there's far fewer transactions. Mortgage rates are much, much higher. Uh, sort of, since the mortgage rates are so important, uh, you saw the charts in breadth, uh, what he has presented, but here's another illustration. So the orange line is what you care about. 30-year fixed rate mortgage, average rate. The blue line is the Federal Reserve policy coming out of Washington. Graph begins from 2019, so pre-COVID. So once COVID happened, March 2020, something we will all share uh, what we did during the lockdown with our grandkids in the future, uh, US Federal Reserve government really did not know what was going to happen. I mean, we were stuck in a basement, we didn't know what to do. So Fed went all in, zero interest rate policy. Zero interest rate is not for you and me, it's for the banking system, but hopefully it will filter so that other interest rate will be lower. And mortgage rate, what do you know? 3%, some people were looking up to get 2.9% mortgage rates. This was a great time to take advantage of those low interest rate environment and we had a real estate boom. In addition, when there was a pandemic, People want to get away from big cities. You even see that in the past history. 
Black Death that occurred in Europe 500 years ago when there was a pandemic. Everybody went to the countryside. They said, no, I'm going to get away from the city. This is how you catch the pandemic. So essentially, people move away from New York City, Chicago, and other big city, trying to go into more areas where there's more less density condition. And I think some people came to Florida. You know, the next to the ocean, certainly, uh, you know, you get the sea breeze and not the next person who may breed on you. So um, people took advantage of those conditions. So you had a real estate boom from partly trying to escape pandemic along with the low interest rate. Then look what happened from spring of last year. Higher interest rate, higher interest rate, higher interest rate. And the Federal Reserve may not be done. They are overdoing it from my perspective because uh, it's causing a lot of harm to the economy, which will begin to show more visibly in the upcoming months. So the mortgage rate being very high has limited the sales activity, your business opportunity. Another thing that is adding a little decimal point or two to the mortgage rate is that America, America the beautiful has been downgraded. No longer AAA status. This is part of the reason why there is even a discussion of the government shutdown. Republicans are essentially saying we are out of control in terms of government spending. While the Democrats are saying, well, we need to provide the necessary funds so that society can function. So let's see the graph. The orange line shows the tax revenue coming into Washington, what you sent over on April 15th, tax revenue coming in. While the blue line shows all government spending, social security payment, food stamps, military jets, all combined. So if you go back to 2020 COVID year, huge increase. Again, great uncertainty. And you may say, well, maybe that was justified given the great uncertainty. We are out of the COVID. We are out of the pandemic. We are meeting in person. We're trying to get our life back to normal, yet government spending appears to be still at that COVID level condition. So how do we fix this? Well, at least one of the Wall Street rating agencies said, the red line and the blue bar does not match up. You are in trouble. So you can no longer provide you with AAA rating. AA rating means a little bit possibly higher interest rate condition because of this uh, downgrade condition. So let's have a, a discussion on this uh, budget deficit national debt issue, but also any government shutdown. We know it's temporary, whether one week, two week, three weeks, but it's gonna cause harm to some aspect of economy and on real estate, maybe flood insurance. If you are renewing, fine for the next 30 days, but if it goes beyond that, if, if you don't get that renewal, what happens? You may not be able to make those transactions. So trying to get this uh, situation, the discussion topic uh, in Washington. So let's look at all the damage caused by the higher interest rates. Home sales are down, impacting realtors' business. Commercial real estate transactions are down, 50% decline from just two years ago. Commercial real estate prices are coming down because it is not a 30-year mortgage. Commercial real estate loan, say you want to buy a bakery shop or a, an office building, is a short-term loan, five year, seven year, and you have to refinance. And when you refinance, you are paying much higher interest rate, and therefore people are saying, no, I cannot you know, borrow money to buy this commercial building at this high interest rate. So commercial real estate prices are beginning to come down not residential prices. Residential prices are still elevated, holding on, but commercial prices are coming down. Many local community banks are under deep stress. We saw the signature uh, Silicon Valley Bank go under uh, several months ago. And since that time, the government put a special lifeline for many community banks. Because of this lifeline, you don't have to worry. If you have your money in the community bank or your business uh, dollars in the community bank, you no worry, you will, uh, your money is safe. But from the banking system, they're in a little tight situation. So they are a little unconcerned about, concerned about how, whether or not they want to make out those loans, but it's only temporary sort of life preserver that the Federal Reserve provided for the community banks. Big banks are not in trouble. And you said, what's going on? I thought the banking system should all move in the same direction. Community banks in trouble, or at least half of them, 
probably, you know, we have 5,000 community banks. Other half are in very good shape, but maybe half are in a little dicey condition, uh, situation. But the big banks are not in trouble. And you say, why are the big banks not in trouble? Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Chase, you know, he's talking big and all this stuff. Is it really that brilliant that big banks are not in trouble? Well, consider, and I don't want to cause a conspiracy theory, but I'm going to just explain the factual situation. The facts are big banks regularly meet with Washington regulators. They have to undergo something called stress tests. So what a stress test is essentially to say, okay, hypothetically, hypothetically, if we were to raise interest rate this much, let me see your balance sheet, whether or not you can handle it. And the Washington regulators would say to Bank of America and other large banks, oh, you have to readjust your balance sheet because you, don't, you cannot handle the higher interest rates. So when the interest rate began to rise strongly, big banks were prepared, while the small banks were left out in the wind just tossed them back and forth. So community banks, which are an important source for commercial real estate loan uh, right now in a difficult situation, and also community banks are the source of lending for co commercial real estate. So given that commercial real estate is already in trouble, is causing ad additional uh, concern uh, related to community bank and commercial real estate. There's economic slowdown. Fortunately, we are still adding jobs. But if you look at the job numbers, every passing month, the job creation is getting lighter and lighter. And one wonders whether that job creation will become zero and then turn negative in the upcoming months. So economic slowdown happening and interest expenses are also rising. So it's not only your credit card situation or your first time buyer trying to buy, but the government has to pay interest on that huge national debt such that next year it's possible that interest payment by the US government to everyone grandmother, Florida teacher pension fund, or even Chinese government who's holding on to the US government bond. All this interest payment will exceed national defense spending. So all the harm causing from higher interest rate condition. And let's look at some specific. This is home sales. Brad went over very specific Florida data, Naples area home sales, but this is national data. Line in the middle is March 2020. Pre-COVID, post-COVID separation. In hindsight, pre-COVID home sales were very stable. Little changes, 5% increase, 6% decrease. But post-COVID, huge swings in sales. Lockdown, then real estate boom, and steady decline in sales once mortgage rate began to rise. We thought that there could be slight recovery. We hit the bottom maybe early part of this year, but now it's sinking again because mortgage rate has risen even further. So home sales down 21% year to date nationwide, and you can see from the graph, well below pre-COVID condition. Builders activity, new home sales, same line. So it looks like a similar situation except for one important difference. Look at the last data point. Builders are back up to pre-COVID. In fact, some of the publicly listed large builders, Lennar, KB Homes, Toll Brothers, their stock prices are up 50% from one year ago, 60% from one year ago, 70% from one year ago. Builders are back in business, they are making money, but not realtors. Realtors, as you saw in the prior graph, uh, at the different situation. So what explains for the difference between the builders and the MLS transactions? And here it is, inventory availability. Existing home inventory, historically low levels, about half of the level of 2019. By the new home inventory, builders build those empty homes, and by their historical standards are at elevator level. So builders can say to the consumers, come, we have homes to sell. While on the existing, you know the reason, people like their low interest rate, they don't want to give that up, so you have low inventory. I spoke with one realtor out in New Hampshire who specialized in lake homes. And he has a ready buyer moving out of New York, going into New Hampshire, say, I want to buy a million dollar property, maximum $1.5 million. And you will be super excited about this clients. 
Yet his answer was, I have zero listings available in this lake uh, uh, condition. So if you have zero listings, independent of buyer demand, zero transaction. So lack of inventory, which is the reason why NAR is talking on two issues, to get some immediate increase in inventory. Home builder inventory always helps in the future. Fortunately, builders are still paying realtors commission. Bring your clients, we'll pay you a commission. So at least you are getting some level of business that way. But way to quickly boost inventory is the following. First is, given, given the home price increases, there are some people who will be hit with capital gains tax if they sell a home. Consider somebody in New Jersey. Prices have risen, they want to sell their home, but they remember what the realtors told them when they bought the home. Realtors said to that person in New Jersey, buy a home, you sell it, you don't pay any tax because of $250,000 exemption, half a million dollars. Half a million dollar for a married couple, 254 single. You sell your home, you don't pay any tax. Guess what? There are many Americans now will have to pay tax because prices have risen so much. So psychologically, I mean, people like the fact they have housing wealth, but psychologically, they don't like the fact they have to turn over more money dollars over to the government. So they said, you know what? I think I'm going to postpone my sale. So we are not getting those inventory. Consider 25 years ago. 25 years ago, how old were you? What were you doing? What were your life aspirations? 25 years ago, price of Coca-Cola was one price. Price of Big Mac one. Price of movie ticket this. The capital gains exemption, $250.5 million, that has not changed for 25 years. It's not fair. If everything is rising, why don't we index that capital gains exemption? So we are talking with members of Congress. We are getting support from both Democrats, Republicans, and Congress. We're trying to see after the you know, shutdown and all this uh, issue to see where we could attach the bill to get this passed. So that maybe somebody from New Jersey can sell their home and come to uh, Naples. Or even in Naples, somebody who wants to move, maybe they don't want to pay tax. The second one, which is a lower probability issue, but we are still in communication because we want to relay all the information. You know, in the current market, the first time buyers have minimal chance to become homeowners. Higher mortgage rates, high home prices, affordability challenges, and no homes available for sale. So is there something to allow some younger adult generation to get into the market? And something that could happen immediately to boost inventory, which is to say mom and pop real estate investors who have four, five, six properties, maybe some of you, can they unload one or two property onto the market? Not BlackRock, not people with huge amount of property, but mom and pop investors, so you can put a limit to say who are owning 10 or less property. If you put a condition, you sell it not to another real estate investor, but if you sell it to a first time buyer, then you will get drastically reduced capital gains on that sale of a transaction. So you would have immediately some mom and pop real estate investors saying, you know, I'm going to unload one right now, maybe uh, to diversify my portfolio. So we are in communication, but I would say that's a lower probability of getting it done. Uh, but we'll see how everything play out because, you know, first we have to get the discussion uh, in place. And this is from local association, uh, website, go with, you know, you get a lot of good information. But what's interesting here is I find that inventory level is up 1%. Maybe it was very, very tight condition one year ago. So 2,500, that is still below, uh, you know, I think six or 7,000 is sort of normal uh, like number. But at least you are getting some increase. And if you look at the pending transaction, it is actually up of course, from very low levels. So it's not back to normal by any sense, but slight increase in inventory is leading to little increase in pending contracts. Closed sales are still down by 12%, but this is from your website uh, at Nabor. Commercial real estate transaction I mentioned down 50%. Uh, so these are on the you know, office building, apartment transactions. Uh, and the prices on the commercial buildings are also beginning to weaken because they don't have 30-year fixed rate mortgage. They have to refinance, refinance, and harder to uh, refinance. 
And community banks, which are represented by the orange line, shows their exposure to commercial real estate loan, but the big bank's exposure to commercial real estate uh, has really not changed. So again, causing secondary harm to the community bank uh, from the exposure on the commercial real estate. So higher interest rate is causing damage to the economy, many sectors. So why is the Fed raising interest rates? Why does even Federal Reserve exist? Because sometimes you have to ask the bigger questions. And you say, well, during the time of George Washington, no Federal Reserve. President Lincoln, no Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve was created in 1913 because academic did some study and said, yeah, it's good to have central bank to help stabilize the economy. So Federal Reserve will have two missions. One mission is to assure that dollar is a dollar. We are not going to have a peso that sort of disappears, boom, you know, it becomes worthless. Dollar will be a dollar. And the second is, during economic downturn, let's try to fix the economy. So those were the two missions of the Federal Reserve. And last year, you went to the grocery store and you said dollar is no longer a dollar. Prices are expensive. Fed has not done their job. So Fed felt embarrassed. And consequently, they said, OK, maybe we had behind the curve, but now we have to contain inflation, raising interest rate, raising interest rate, raising interest rate. So they were very aggressive in trying to bring this down. And fortunately, recent data indicate that inflation is now little calmer, 3.7%. This does not mean prices are lower. It just means price increases are becoming more moderate, not the big increases of last year. And since we are now in a political season, two factual information that will come out from Democratic Party, they will begin to say, America's standard of living is beginning to rise because green bar, people's wage growth, is exceeding inflation. But the Republicans' narrative is to say, since the inauguration of President Biden, wage growth, the green bar, is trailing the overall price increases. We have about one year left to see whether President Biden can catch up so that you know, green bar cumulatively over a four-year time span is higher. Uh, but this is the two factual information in the narrative that you will begin to hear during this political season. Let me, for the sake of time, just move on here for a second. So if we look at the price increases, inflation being a little calmer, and look at individual items, we see some variations. Let's start from the bottom. Airfare, a little lower, even though it may be a big headache to, uh, the, to, to fly. Gasoline prices a little lower this year, even though it's still much higher than pre-COVID condition. Electricity up 2%, new car up 2.9%. Uh, lodging away from home, hotel and Airbnb up 3%, clothes up 3%. I put the red bar because these are a daily reminder to people. So food prices are still running 4%, which is a little high. Daily reminder that things are not back to normal. And the rent growth is up 7.8% according to government statistics. Little outlier, the top number, car insurance, 19%. Why? Well, maybe there is a shortage of mechanics. We are sending too many people to college and not enough in the trade skills. Maybe that's the problem. But second issue is the following. I'm from Washington, D.C. Every day, teenagers smashing car windows to see what's inside. They get arrested, they get released, they do it again. I don't think we are at the peak. Even though the car may not be smashed here in uh, Naples, you are partly paying for it in terms of higher insurance costs. So right now, these are some of the movements. But let me focus on the uh, rent condition, because rents are rising at 7.8%. And that is the heavyweight component of the price inflation. It's the big amount. Price of eggs is a fun story, but it's insignificant. What is important is rents. So rents are rising at 7.8%. And you may actually ask yourself, is your rents, I mean, you were able to raise rent strongly the past two years. But today, can you raise the rent by another 8%? I don't know. You know. This is a national data. Some markets may not be. Maybe in Naples, you are able to. But we are at a 40-year high in terms of apartment construction. 40-year high. So much empty unit, ready to hit the marketplace, steadily reaching the marketplace. 
So why is the rents still rising strongly when we have this massive supply coming onto the market? In fact, private sector data, not government data, is actually showing that rents are now rising at 2%. Last year, rents were good. Two years ago, rents were good. But now, the rent increases are very minimal, given the competition from these empty new units hitting the apartment. So this is the private sector data. And just to overlay with government data what the official numbers are saying, you see the figure. So if somehow government data begins to follow and match up with the private sector data, then inflation will be much calmer. And inflation, in fact, you would say dollar has become a dollar again, or 2% consumer price inflation. And Federal Reserve no longer needs to raise interest rates. And in fact, it may even offer an opportunity to, to cut interest rates. So if the private sector data is used, there's no need for the Federal Reserve to right now even consider raising interest rates. They should be even considering cutting interest rates, given that inflation numbers are much calmer. Home prices, interestingly, are not part of the consumer price inflation. Because just like stock prices or gold prices is considered an asset, and assets are not considered part of the consumer price inflation. So even though it's an important for your consumers, government does not include this as part of the consumer price inflation. But you want to know what the trend is. So in the past year, past 12 months, orange states have price declines out in the West. California is down a little on the prices. Nevada is down. But Florida, price is still up. And let me see here, 6.9%. You know, we are in this building, you know, people helping about longevity, people live longer, so your bone breaks apart, so they're gonna fix it. So it's, uh, it's one of those things, you know, a blessing in disguise, I guess. We all wanna live a longer life. The longer life also means that our health begins to deteriorate more. Uh, one of the things that happens to just about everyone across all racial categories is that by the time that you turn age 45 or 50, you can no longer see the menu anymore. <laughs> you have to always readjust, you know, you know part. Um, but anyway, you may not be able to see it. Uh, the numbers I will relay over to you, 6.9% price growth for the state of Florida in the past year. But what about compared to pre-COVID condition? So, from the onset of COVID, every state have higher prices. Florida, I think, is the leader. Yes, it is. 62% increase in home prices uh, compared to, so Florida is the leader in home price growth from pre-COVID to the latest available data. Home price appreciation in the local area looks like the following from year 2000. You see in the middle, that's the subprime lending loan implosion, and you actually have some price declines. As Brad mentioned, we don't have foreclosure crisis, and we don't anticipate foreclosure crisis because we don't have subprime lending. But the price increases are beginning to calm down here in the Naples region, so the latest showing price gain of 11% from one year ago in this repeat price measurement. I think the median home prices are about the same, uh, but the median prices are not the, the more sort of same house, a uh, little fancier equation that goes into this uh, calculation. So at least you are still in the positive territory. And home value, uh, collateral values for all residential real estate is in the blue bar. The red line shows total mortgage outstanding. So that little decline that you see at the end, that's from California market. Because of California, you are seeing some little decline in the overall collateral value. But sometimes the media will only focus on the orange line. They will look at the orange line and ignore the blue and say, mortgage debt outstanding in America is at a record high. But that's kind of putting out of the context, trying to scare people we are overburdened with debt. The collateral value behind that is very, very well supported. The gap between the two is homeowners' wealth. Uh, the monthly payment has almost essentially doubled. You saw that in the breadth chart. More people are using cash. I think the Naples are probably more cash transaction compared to other regions across the country. You have the wealthy people moving in. Um, and also the distressed property, we are not really seeing it. Some of the new realtors, 
You may not know what a short sale is. <laughs> is a nightmare and headache. Good thing that you don't you have, you didn't have to know about what a short sale is, because there will not be a short sale situation uh, here in the market. Let me turn to the job market and quickly wrap it up. So the job market situation is with each passing month, we have more job in America. So the beginning of the graph shows right before COVID and then when they, uh, everyone lost, people working in the hotel restaurant lost their job during the lockdown. Good thing that you talk with the governor here in Florida. Florida Association of Realtors is very active on your behalf to make real estate essential. So you could do open houses. Not in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania realtors were frustrated. Come on, let us do open houses. And the governor said, nope, you are not essential. You cannot do open houses. Uh, but in Florida, they quickly made you do the open houses. Uh, so with each passing month, more job creation. If we look at state by state comparison, three year time span, pre-COVID to today, orange color, they have not fully recovered in terms of jobs. New York, no job addition now compared to pre-COVID. Some states are slightly negative, like North Dakota is negative, Vermont is slightly negative. But the blue color state are positive, darker blue, even more positive. Florida is in the top rank uh, state, 8.6% more jobs now compared to pre-COVID, 8.6% more job. Only other state to outperform Florida is some of the Rocky Mountain states smaller size um, Rocky Mountain state in terms of population. So Florida among the big state, well performing. Texas are still doing very, very well. If you look at specifically in this region, payroll jobs, including people here working in this uh, building. So there were about 100,000 people working in the Naples region back in the year 2000. Today the number is, looks like about 165,000. So far more job creation. You welcome those wealthy retirees. They're coming here not to work, so they don't show up on the numbers. But when they come here, they're bringing their money, so you need to have restaurant workers, you need to have you know, health care facility, maybe financial advisors. So uh, the job creation occurs even if you have retirees moving, coming into the region. So the forecast, to wrap it up. Mortgage rate has been rising and rising. Right now, I am little concerned that in the short term, mortgage rate may go up to 8% in the short term. But it will be of short duration, only maybe through September, uh, we're almost end of September, October, um, but by Thanksgiving time, I think the mortgage rate would, would have retreated back down to what it is, in like 7% range. But by early spring, I see it going closer to 6% that time you are going to have many buyers coming into the market. You want that low mortgage rates. So this is my forecast. Of course, not all forecasts are perfect, but this is my anticipation. Three key reasons. One is rents are already coming down in the private sector data. I think it's inevitable that government data will catch up and that will show inflation is not a concern. Fed can cut interest rate as, go, as we go into next year. Second reason, with each interest rate high, community banks are suffering. And I think the Federal Reserve is well aware of this and they don't want to cause more harm. So any opportunity to cut interest rate, they want to cut interest rate because they want to help out the community banks. So that's another reason. And the third reason is the following. A little esoteric, most mortgages in America are government back. Because of government back, the spread between the government borrowing rate and mortgage rate tends to be narrow. Right now it is abnormally large spread, but anytime you have abnormally large spread, those abnormality disappear over time, usually within six month time. So I anticipate that this abnormal widespread between government borrowing rate and mortgage rate will disappear. Just to put a simplicity, right now, 10 year treasury is 4.5%. Under normal spread, mortgage rate should be averaging at 6.5%. So even if we just get the spread back to normal, you are already have something closer to 6%. On top of that, Fed cuts interest rates, uh, you are looking at much better condition. So you're gonna have more buyers. Only thing is, are you going to have enough supply, adequate supply? 
you know, we, we talked about some of the policy measure, capital gains exemption, investor uh, incentive, and such. And consider, I'm gonna spend just one minute to wrap this up. Number of people who have experienced life-changing events over the past two years when they say, look, I love my 3% rate, I don't, know, I don't wanna give that up. Seven million babies born in America. Where are they sleeping? In the kitchen. They need a larger size home, but they are unwilling to move. Three million marriages, one and a half million divorces, seven million Americans turn 65. Well, you should retire, go to Florida. They're saying, no, I don't want to go. I have 3% mortgage rate, I love it. But then somebody has to remind them, how did you envision your retirement years? Because your life expectancy is beginning to catch up. You know, they will begin to consider. Four million deaths in the country, and I mentioned four million job creation, but underneath that is 50 million job switches. People quitting, people getting fired, people finding new job. Their commuting pattern is all messed up, yet they are living in the same house. So people will say, heck with it. If the mortgage rate goes with 6%, I know it's not 3%, but I need to make a move. So I think what will be unique about next year is you are going to have combination of more buyers and more sellers appearing. So a combination of more sellers and more sellers, this is how you make the market, this is how you make the market go. Uh, and consequently, my forecast is that 2023 is difficult. The blue bar is home builders. So home builders will actually may actually do better this year, but you are looking at the total sales. So this year is difficult, but wait until next year where things I think will really play out uh, in a much better way. So thank you very much for coming and thank you very much for listening.